Yes, that's true. I just put on some cologne. Why shouldn't I? Yeah, no, I, I know nobody can smell it, either on the audio or the video, <clears throat> but it just makes me feel better. I feel like uh, I'm presentable now. I smell good. If you could smell me on either the audio or uh, the video, then you would be impressed. I smell pretty good right now. Hi, everyone. Martin Zender. And look, the, the uh, meeting in Birmingham is on the 24th. I believe I said the 21st because I talk too freaking fast sometimes. I get ahead of myself. I am just so excited uh, about these things, and I start talking a mile a minute. I try to enunciate so that you understand what I am saying, but uh, I go a little crazy here sometimes. Uh, so anyway, that's the 24th, not the 21st. Saturday, October 24th in Birmingham. Saturday, October 17th, because there's seven days separates the 17th from the 24th. Watch it. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, we got that straightened out. And it's Tony Joyner. I just, as soon as I turned the uh, thing off, of course, I came up with it a little too late. It wasn't embarrassing for him. It was embarrassing for me. And so, and he was just here uh, two days ago. No, yesterday. I, I can't keep track. He was here yesterday with Philip Garrison. Had great time of uh, fellowship with those guys. Talked about the end times. And... Um, with my hostess here, Ann Brechtelsbauer. She owns this wonderful house here, and she's uh, uh, let me build my uh, studio here, if you want to call it a studio. Well, look at this. What kind of studio has drapery like you see here? It looks like something uh, out of the uh, Versailles, King Louis Palace there, Louis XIV. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm not used to this kind of thing, but uh, I'm digging it. And so I'm going to make it up to Tony Joyner by mentioning his name about 14 times today. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that. But did you know, did you know that the militants of Islam, they want to behead the Pope at the Vatican? Yeah, I should have turned that fan off. You hear the whoosh of the fan. I shouldn't have mentioned it. Now you're going to hear nothing but the whoosh of the fan. I can't. I can't reach the switch from here. So, anyway, yeah. Some of the some of the trials and traumas of uh, recording on the road. But listen to this. Islam. They want to behead the Pope. I gotta. Well, they're certainly um, high-minded. They certainly have uh, epic goals. They're terrible. They want to behead the Pope at the Vatican, and Francis has said he expects to be murdered. The guy expects to die. He's too much of a populist pope. And the enemies, of course, Islam, the enemies of any religion that's not Islam. They're the only people that aren't friends with the pope on the planet, I think. Everybody else loves the guy. But can you imagine if something like that happens? Now, listen, something like that is going to happen. I hope that doesn't happen to poor Pope Francis. Uh, but something is going to happen that's going to unify uh, the West against Islam, and we're finally going to say, that's it. You've, you've gone too far. Uh, not even 9-11 was too far, as you can see. And so what does Obama do? He, he makes a pact uh, with uh, Iran with the nuclear deal, and um, which isn't a deal at all, and it's going to end up forcing Israel to act to defend her own interests. And then everybody can be mad at Israel. We know that's going to happen at the end. But before everybody gets mad at Israel, everybody's going get, to get mad at Islam. Islam's going to be made docile or docile, if you want to say it that way. Something's got to happen to stop them. Because them four wings are getting a little irritating, aren't they? Now, one of the things I didn't mention about Islam yesterday was that it's given authority. That was one of the things mentioned to Daniel by God, when, by the Holy Spirit, when he saw this vision. It was granted authority. And I, I didn't, well, didn't specifically mention that that's the reason I talked about these, these knowers, the ulama in Islam, that they are sometimes able to withstand civil authority because the one thing that is said of the leopardess is it's given authority and really i believe our president here in the united states president obama has given 
Islam authority by not actively stopping them, almost excusing them. And, well, you know, he doesn't realize, I don't think, uh, the size of the problem. He thinks it's just a skirmish that can be, you know, squashed with a couple smart bombs. It's, it's not just that. It's not only that. It's bigger than that. It's a religious war. That's what it is, a religious war. Now, here's a solemn thought for you. If, I should, if you have organ music there at home, if you have a program on your computer that can play organ music, I would like you to dish it up right now. I would import it onto this program, but again, I'm just getting by here with my on-the-road studio in Pinehurst, North Carolina. Here's the, thol the solemn thought. That, see, I'm talking too fast again. Any attempt on the part of the clergy, the religious people, to interfere with the civil authorities makes them a part of the beast because again these beasts are aggressive these beasts have it in mind to divide and conquer or in this case to unify and conquer that's what the christian religion is going to do unify and conquer philip garrison said a funny thing when he came here with um oh my god tony joiner and I'm going to tell you what that is in a little bit. I'm going to hold on to that. Um, it is a right religion. And the only right religion really is the Jewish religion. It is a right religion which waits on God's timing. Israel is the only nation that has been told that it is going to rule the earth. Christianity has not been told that. Islam has not been told that. They think that they are destined to do it, but they're not. Actually, uh, they're destined to be stopped. So any aggression on, of any religion, including apostate Israel, to take the reins of political power, this is a sign that they are of the beasts rising from the sea in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Because, as Jesus said when he stood before Pilate, my kingdom's not of this world. It wasn't of that world. It'll be of the next world. And it's going to be brought in by spiritual means, not by intellect, not by political movements, not by military might. And, by the way, we are going to get to Christendom. We have one more beast left, the monstrous. And I'm going to explain to you how that is Christianity. So isn't it a strange uh, thought to have? And I have these thoughts all the time, and I share them with you, whether they're strange or not, uh, that these ecclesiastical powers we're looking at are branded in the Scriptures as being from evil spirits, and they're comparable to beasts of prey. And in every case, these beasts are man's enemies. We keep them behind bars at the zoo. Lions, bears, leopardesses, oh my, we keep them behind bars. You don't see a lion or a leopardess or a bear at the petting zoo or the petting part of the zoo because they're ravenous, they're dangerous. So, and so I would love to see these religions behind bars. You should have to go see them at the zoo to visit them. They should be contained. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, especially Islam and Christianity, they should be behind bars. Maybe you throw peanuts at them or some bits of popcorn. You buy a ticket to go in to see them. But no, instead they're running the earth. They're all over the earth. So these are branded by the scripture as beasts of prey, man's enemies while the civil authorities get this while the civil authorities are called quote god's servants for good isn't that amazing and paul calls them that in romans 13 4 god's servants for good because they have more sense i'd rather have a a body trying to fix the roads and you know lower taxes and uh 
hold meetings at the city hall. Then these wild beast powers, thinking that they have, each one thinks they have God on their side, and getting into wars based on their theology. That, that, that is horrible. And so we're better off with the civil authorities who, uh, for the most part, are regulated for our good. Well, actually, for all part, they're for our good. But sometimes that good is not what we think is good. That's another story altogether. We could go to Romans 13 for that. You've heard me teach on it many times. If you haven't, where you been? So God's real slaves, if you're a slave of Christ, as I am, you should not be taking any part that is a really integral integral part or a, a uh, active, emotionally involved role in the power religions of today. And that's what they are. They're power religions. The Catholic religion is a power religion because the Pope has political power. People ask him what his opinion is on politics. And would Pope Francis like to rule the world? Of course. Of course. And one of the ways they're doing it is through this global warming. If you have a global problem, then it's going to take a global solution. Even if the problem's fake, it doesn't matter if people think it's real, then we have to unify and uh, it's going to take some kind of a catalyst, whether it's global warming or whatever it is, to bring the nations together. And for some reason, this was Pope Francis thought he needed to get involved in global warming. Can you imagine Jesus Christ on the sermon at the Sermon on the Mount? Instead of talking about, you know, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek. Instead of saying that, he's talking about CO2 emission and car carbon dioxide and uh and um um uh, uh segregating your you know burlap from your silk as you throw it away i mean it's ridiculous what is what do what does a true spiritual person or organization have to do with seg segregating paper from plastic as if this planet is our home. It's our temporary boot camp. You know, this is a hell of a planet, but it's also a hell of a planet. It could blow up tomorrow and I'd be fine with it, okay? I don't want anybody to be hurt, but so be it. It's going to be rejuvenated in the thousand years. This planet is. It's not going to be blown up until the end of the thousand years. You can quote me on that. So how ironic that God's friends, more there are more friends of God in the halls of government than there are in the halls of religion. More friends of God who are working his will, they're doing more in the halls of government, in the White House. They're doing more to enact the will of God, the, even the revealed will of God. We have laws that are enforced, uh, airline regulations that make sure those things don't crash. Wonderful. Uh, but in the halls of religion, in the halls of churches and synagogues and uh, cathedrals, we have ravenous beasts who are taking more and more of a hand in politics. Certainly Islam is, but Christianity is too. And this is going to come to a head soon and i think we're going to see it and if not i won't be too disappointed but what's going to happen is the west is going to get tired of the belligerent posturing of islam and we're going to put them down islam's going to survive but it's going to be very humbled and everyone then is going to join in the desire to annihilate israel